Okey doke, hello and welcome to my channel. So today I am going to draw this water buffalo that you can see in the top right hand side of my screen. And I am going to start, I'm probably just going to squeeze his head into the page. I don't know whether I'm going to get to do the whole lot, but I'm going to start by drawing his basic outline. Now, his horns are as wide as his head, so I've got to leave enough room on the side of the page to do, to, I've got to centralise him more. I'll leave enough room on the side of the page because his horns are almost as wide as the page. They're beautiful animals, they're huge. Very, very interesting looking, very striking. We've got them wild here in Australia, up north. Okay, so I'm uh, just going to get, just draw his basic outline in first. Try and get that in first. Let's see how we go. Come down and around. Oops. Okay. Okay, so he's got the sides of his head joined onto his horns there. So now. His horns are one and a half, so actually, so his head, the width of his head is one and a half, so that is one, whoops, broke your pencil, one, and then half of that is the length of his head. So that's how I come up with um, the measurements, dimensions and things like that. So then I can work with how far down, and his head doesn't really have a lot of shape to it. It's just sort of a semi-oval shape. So I'll come down to his nose. Get that down there like that. I've got to, I've got to, I'll adjust the shape of his head as I go. So the, I'll, I'll just get the basic shapes in first and then I'll adjust. So I've got to do his nose now. So his nose, and I'll go over this with micron pen as well, because I love using micron pen, and I'll add some detail with that. They've got the cutest mouths. <laughs> they really do have the cutest mouths. Um, big, soft, sort of squishy looking lips. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, now his lips actually come out past the side of his cheeks there. So I've got to make them a bit wider. I can erase anything that I'm not happy with and just readjust. So I adjust and readjust as I go. I do adjust and readjust as I go. So I get... Alright. Now he's got... I'm not going to get the whole picture in. So I'm just picking bits of it. And I'm going to have his ears going to pop off to the side a little bit. Which is all good. Um... Actually, the, I just noticed the picture in my screen is in reverse. So what I'm going to do is if I can flip it. How do I flip it? Uh, video capture. Can I? I'm just going to see if I can flip it. Uh, device. Uh, how do I flip it? Oh, I don't know how to flip it. Doesn't matter. We'll just have to have to leave it like that. I suppose. His ear disappears off out the side of the page, so we don't worry about that. So do that, and then his ear goes down. It's below his eye, as you can see, I've got it below his eye. Um, and then that ear's actually back. It's like he's swatting a fly or something. So I'll pop that ear there, and you can only see, you can sort of see the side of it. Goes back. Comes up almost to his horn, like that, and disappears off. So it's it's facing back. So that's all right. And his shoulder is up here. Like that. Comes down around that part of his... They're huge. They are really massive creatures. They really are hugely massive. Am I going to do the bird? I should do the bird, shouldn't I? I should do the bird. I'm going to see if I can flip that screen. I don't know why. 
uh, image, no, headphones, audio, video capture, come back with it, yep, that's not it, um, oh, that's not it either, I'll just leave it, oh, I'm just leaving it, <laughs> I did reverse, but we won't worry, okay, so, okie doke, He's got his nose down here. Got to make it a bit wider, I think. So I'm just roughing it all in. Roughing it all in. Adjust and readjust anywhere that I'm not 100% happy with. Change the angle on his nose a little bit. Make it take out his cheeky bits that way. Now his eye. They don't have very big eyes in comparison to their heads. And they're very wrinkly looking creatures too, which is interesting. Um, I'm just going to blow him up a bit on my screen, on my page, so I can see him a bit better. And adjust, I'll adjust and readjust. His eye is about the middle of his ear like that. And it comes down there. He's looking a bit square at the second. I've got to soften him up a bit, but I'll do that once I've finished the main part of the drawing. Keep his eyes sort of level. He's got beautiful eyelashes. I'm going to erase that bit. Like that. All right. Get rid of that. Okay, now he's got his little bird on his head. So I'll draw his little bird on there. It comes down. They're an interesting looking little bird. I've actually done a painting of this ages ago or one, one like this. And um, it had a little bird on it as well. And they're the prettiest little birds. They've got bright red eyes. Bright red. So I'll draw his little little head in and he's got yellow bits of feathers are all ruffled up and they eat all the little bugs off oh there's two little birds on him I didn't realize that the more the closer you look the more you see so there's two little birds on him but I'll only draw the one because I only really want to see the one so that's all right now I can erase where's my needable eraser I need my needable eraser there it is that's what I'm after you know what I think I've made his head too short I've got to lengthen it got to lengthen it a fraction so see this is the thing you can change things that's a bit better just needs to be that fraction longer just a fraction longer just like that just like a two or three, one or two centimeters longer that's all it needs to be like that and then it's got beautiful big soft looking lips I'll erase that um, that bit of the pencil mark up there that I don't want. Like that. Change the shape of that. Then his nose comes down. His nostrils, rather, come down like that. Right. There we go. I think that's looking all right. I think that's looking all right. And he's got... Big soft squishy nose. His ears are hairy. So I can draw some of that detail in. That ears facing the back. That he's sort of swooshing it. Now I can draw some wrinkles in around his eyes. Start to get some detail in there a little bit. I've got to thicken up his horns too. Make them a bit thicker. But I suppose I can do that with um, detail after. Add a bit of detail. There we go, that's a bit better. That one needed to be a bit thicker. Alright. And he's got... You can see the reflection on his eyeball. So pop that in. He's got big, sort of dried up hair on his tear ducts. Uh, let's have a look. So he's got his eyeball there. He's got a reflection on his eye pupil there. He's got a 
and rounded that off a bit more. And then this tear duct comes down there. And it's got like a wrinkle under there. I can I can I'm gonna pencil in all of these lines to begin with. And I could go over them with micron pen in a little bit. And just a little itty bitty bit, but I want to get everything marked in first. I don't like what I've done with the top of his head, but we'll fix that. That's easy to fix. Like that. He's got a bump on his head. Like that. He's got hairy ears. He's got very sort of leathery looking ears to there. And then he's got hair. Very leathery looking. And hair flips around to the back like that. Okay, right. Now the wrinkles on this side. They sort of come down and he's got mud on his head because <laughs> he's been frolicking around in the in the mud plains and the swampy bits. See that the lines make the difference. The lines really do add personality. They really do. Um, just like on humans, lines add, add soul and personality. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so I'm going to get my micron pen now. I'm happy with that as a drawing. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I'm happy with that. So I'm going to my 005 micron pen. And I'm going to start roughing in, not exactly like my sketch, his outline. And I'm going to get that exactly where I want it. Like that. And then get around his eye. And I can still adjust things a little bit. Leave. I'm going to go around that. That little square there is going to be the highlight on his pupil. Um, so I'm going to leave that the white of the paper. He's also got another little highlight there. So I'm going to leave that. He's got a light under his eyelid. Where his tear duct goes down. Alright, I'm happy with that. I started with the eyes, as you do. Give him a bit of a bigger iris on that eye. Try and match it with the first one. Give him a line around the outside edge like that. He's got his eyelashes. And he's got that highlight that I've got to leave. Does he have a bottom highlight? He does. He does have a bottom highlight on that other eye as well. So I'll leave that in. It's all about observation. Just looking and trying to notice everything or as many things as you can. Just keep looking, see as much as you can. So that's where his horn joins his head. I'll do the same on the other side on a slight angle. And I'm leaving it rough lines because I want it to look fairy. Because he's got his fairy bits. Alright, now draw his horn. Follow his line that I've done. And come back around here. Doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same as my underdrawing. I can very rarely hold the same line twice. <laughs> but, um, alright. Then I'll draw some of the patterns onto the. Oh, I can do that in a minute. I'll draw his other horn first. I can draw the patterns on in just a minute. That's absolutely fine and it's easy peasy to do. It can be a little bit wonky because nothing in nature is symmetric completely. It's not even not possible. Things in nature aren't symmetric. Alright, so I can draw his ear on now. Now he's got these lines coming down here. And I can do a lot of the detail. Rather, I can add the tone and colour with the watercolour. But I can do a lot of the texture with pen which is really good fun because I absolutely adore drawing. Drawing is my favourite thing on earth to do. My absolute, I could not imagine life without drawing. And I draw every day if I can. Every single day. Even if it's just a five second, like a five minute sketch, I'll do it. I'll do it as is. I have a, I have a pen and paper in my handbag that goes with me everywhere. So even at work on my lunch break. I'll do a drawing at lunch just to practice, keep my eye in. So I suggest to do that if you get a chance and because you can always make time. OK, 
Okay, so I've got to make his face a fraction wider coming down to there like that. Same on this side. Keep it, try and keep the symmetry happening. All right, now his mouth, I'll, I'll change the angle slightly on his head like that. All right, that's pretty good. So you can see I've got one eye up slightly higher than the other. I can adjust things. I can adjust and make things look a bit more symmetric. It's not that hard to do. Come down and around. Down and around. Like that. And he's got this beautiful soft nose. Get his mouth in there. Like that. And then his chin, his bottom lip. Like that. Okay, looking good. I'm pretty happy with that so far. Pretty happy with that. So I'll draw his big shoulder coming down there. And he's going to have lots of shadows under his chin to help to define the back part of his body from his head because I don't want it all to blend in. Now He's got a big yellow bit around his eye and he's got a bright red and yellow beak. Pop that on like that and he's a really ruffled up little bird, he really is. He's had a bad day I reckon. <laughs> okay and I'll do his little wing coming down there and ruffle his feathers. that and have his little tail coming down there and you can't see his foot it's under his fur so that's fine so he's got all the hair all the hair on the back of the bison but what a buffalo I was going to call him bison then or on the back of the bison buffalo whatever he is water buffalo <laughs> I'm, I'm mixing myself up now okay so I could start with detail now so I'm going to start drawing the, the lines on his horns because his horns are quite rough around the edges. It's a battle scarred old old bison, buffalo. Yeah, bison, bison are the ones that live in Central America, I think. These guys live up the top end of Australia and New Guinea and places and Asia. They're an Asian sort of a buffalo. Alright, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that. I've got to do some do the lines around his eyes. I can follow a few of these lines around. It's very wrinkly. He's a very wrinkly dude. Like that. Alright, come around here. <coughs> All right, we're good. And he's got a shadow up here. I'm just going to add some lines to his horns and keep them looking interesting because he's got little wary bits. And All right, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. As far as the sketch goes, now I can, I can erase all the underdrawing. So I just get my kneadable eraser. And I'll see any bits I've missed as well. And erase all of that. That makes life a bit easier. Got that all going. Awesome, awesome. There we go. So that's erased enough. That'll do. That'll do. So I am now going to go in. See, I've missed a bit there, so I better add that in. Having a look at my big screen. I have got that eye a little bit lower than the other, but I can add detail to make it look larger than it is. Gotta large up the picture. Okay, and I'm gonna add his nose texture because he's got all patterns on his nose. It's all like little freckly, hairy, skin pory bits. So I add those on, and I can do dots as well. I'll add color over the top. 
add all the hairy bits around the edge. So he's got little rogue hairs going everywhere. All around. Right, so that's his drawing. I'm happy with that. Right, so let's get into the watercolour now, shall we? So bring my watercolour palette a bit closer. Like that. So you can see that off to the right hand of my page. And I am going to start, grab a bit of cloth. I've got to get a bit of kitchen cloth in my hand. And we are going to start with his eyes and his pupils and his uh, irises are golden coloured. So I'm going to get some transparent sienna because we love transparent sienna. Transparent sienna. And I'm going to pop that straight onto his iris, leaving the white spot, the white areas for the highlights. So you just leave the white of the paper for the highlights. And they'll be your brightest whites, which is what you want. Okay, while that's still wet, I'm going to go burnt umber. I've got to re-spritz my um, watercolours there a bit dried out. I bet it, I've got a, just a squirty bottle that I spritz my watercolours with. So I was giving them a spritz. Alright, get a bit of burnt umber while the paint is still damp. On his eye, get it on my brush. Get, I need a bigger brush. I should be using a bigger brush, slightly bigger brush. Okay, you can see I've got the burnt umber up there. It's just a warm, a different brown, stronger brown. And I add that onto the transparent sienna that I've just dropped in, just into the center of his eye. And I'll add a dark, dark over the top of that in just a little bit. First of all, I will get, now I'm going to get onto his nostril, and I can use burnt umber, cobalt or ultramarine, I'll use indigo, burnt umber and indigo, into his nostrils, and that makes a brown grey. So pop that in there, like that. We're good, okay. Got to leave a highlight around the edge. Now the inside, and, and I've got to do under here as well, around under the edge of his mouth, because he's, he's got he's all greys. He's all greys. This this cow, this buff, bison, buffalo, he's all greys. So he's just varying tones of grey. So I'll just mix up a heap of different dilute dilutions of this same grey, grey brown. So it's indigo and burnt umber. I'm using Sennelia and Schminky watercolours, and I'm actually going to get a slightly bigger brush. And I'm going to use that to wash over pretty much. I can bring that blue into there. That's not going to hurt it. It's still a grey. And I'm going to wash this blue, brown, grey, very diluted, right round him. Just keep it very, very, very thin, watery. Keep it diluted. Drag it around everywhere. It'll dry a couple of tones lighter. And I can add different browns to it as well. And darker bits when I need to. I've just got to leave, I've got to be careful to leave a little bit around his eye. So I can actually come up over onto his body too. I'll stay off his horns for the minute. Actually, you know what? I could probably even go onto his horns. Well, I've got to keep moving while it's while it's wet, I've got to keep moving, keep the paint moving on the paper because I don't want any hard lines. So you just got to keep it moving. Keep it moving. All the way I can go over everything pretty much because it's all that greyish colour. Oops. Actually you know what? I can go over his horns. I can go over the whole lot. Why not? Let's do that. Let's just go over the whole lot because we can. It's absolutely fine. I'll just have to go around this brown bit that I've put on and I can add darker bits because this is still quite pale. So for the lightest tone that I'm going to be using Oops, I should have had a bit more than that on my palette, but that's okay. I know what colours I mixed. It's ultramarine and, not ultramarine, it's indigo and burnt umber. Are my go-to colours. I should take that all the way, so I'll go indigo, burnt umber. This brush holds up oh, a lot more, a lot more paint. Okay, a bit more indigo, make it really diluted take that down 
to the bottom of the page like that. All right. So leave a couple of little bits, doesn't matter. Righto. So that's that bit. Now, while he's still damp, I'm going to go back up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to absorb a lot of that. I made a bit of a bit of a mess there. I'm going to go ultramarine, burnt umber, a little bit less water, a little bit more pigment. And while this is wet, as long as you go a little bit thicker than what you've got on the paper, it won't do weird things. So this is a fraction thicker than what I've put down already. And I'm going to let this go into the shadowy areas. And it'll, it'll keep soft lines this way. That way, yeah, it'll keep softer lines. Because I want to just start to create little shadow areas. He's actually very dark all the way around there, isn't he? He's dark in there. Anywhere that he's darker, I'm going to pop this darker tone. Come around the bottom of his lip. He's got it darker into his nostrils, into the side of his little squishy bit in the middle of his nose. Like that. Let's clean my brush, dampen it and just drag that out a bit. Looks very rough to begin with. It takes a little while for it to come together, but all right. Now that ear is actually quite dark under where the horn is. I missed a bit there, didn't I? But luckily, I've got this shadowy colour, and I'll use blues coming into later on too. I'll, I'll add a few blues and things to help with the the shadows. And his hairs on his ears are incredibly dark, so while that's all still damp, keep moving around, getting that into there, underneath the birds in shadow. And I'm going to work up in like half tone, so I'll get half a shade darker. Oh, I missed a completely missed a bit there, didn't I, on that side of the bird? So pop that in there. Oops. Drag that right round like that. Okay, so now I'm going to mix up some more exactly the same colour, just less water. So it's indigo, burnt umber, like that. Makes a stronger darky brown grey. And I'm going to pop that. So you can see that's like two tones darker than the previous tone. And I'm going to come around the edge of his horn in the darkest shadowy bit, like that. Start to get a little bit of three-dimensional look to him. Come back in around here, like that. All right, now I'm going to damp my brush. Damp my brush and run that. So I'm going to put a bit of water on the next bit. Go over that horn. Take that right round, trying to stay in the lines if I can. Take it right round there. Doesn't matter if I go out a little bit, I can clean it up. Oops. All right. Take that right round there. Back towards his head, and we're good. I'm going to leave a little couple of little snips of light around the edge. You can see why I don't use the bottom parts of the palette because I put my hand in it. <laughs> oh, I rest my hand on the palette, keeps my hand up off the table. I'll leave the bottom couple of bays empty. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. Have a quick look, let it dry. Now I'm going to use this same darker colour that I've got here. Now I can go into his ear, start to darken up. Any really darky shadow areas like this down under here, and I'll, like I said at the end, before I'll, at the end I'll add purples to help as well. And just build up light to dark. You always work your lights to dark to help you with them. Um, you know, it's easy to build up layers from light to dark. It helps you to keep, yeah, to see your tones and things. 
okay so I've got to get so I've got to mix up some more so exactly the same color indigo ultramarine blue oh, sorry indigo burnt umber that's a brownie gray just less water a little bit less water and while it's still damp I'm going to run that right around the edge of his ear and this is going to take several layers it will take several layers to do and drag that down onto the hairy bits and I'll add some browns as well eventually because that'll add some warmth to his fur because he has got some mottly browns on him as well but for now I'm just marking it in just suggesting some fur texture up here just doing little brushy lines keeping it pretty simple and not going too fussy it's not a complex picture it's just being patient and knowing how to layer so yeah that, that underneath paper is dry now and you can see that just looks like fur that looks like fur just rough coarse buffalo fur as you do just brushing roughly in the direction with a semi dry brush in the direction the fur goes on the buffalo and it just suggests it just suggests it nicely I think right so now I'm going to go a bit of more burnt umber a bit less less blue I'll just use whatever's on the palette and I'm going to take that oxidase and I'm going to wash that over the top of that grey so that's just a little bit more burnt umber in amongst it a little bit more and I'm very sort of slap dashy with my with my watercolor I'm not fussy I, I, I go with what feels right I try to be more um, sort of feel what I'm doing and less fussy the more the less the more the faster I go the better I work I turn my art turns out if I take too like too to too much time with it it looks too too like hard flat doesn't have any life to it the more movement you've got in your work the more alive it looks I think so I try to keep moving keep it keep the movement it's just my way of working more impressionist I'm a very impressionist kind of painter all right come down and around the edge of his nose see a bit of brown on the tip of his nose and under here as well I can see a bit of brown around the side there around the side here I can't really see any brown on his back I can see it towards the back of his sort of towards his quarters um, all right and then I come up here and I go a little bit I'm going to go into his ears with a bit of this brown actually I'm going to go a bit of I've got a bit of this bluey grey colour I'm going to try that it's like a bluey silvery grey see if I can get some so it doesn't want to lift it doesn't like coming off the palette this one it's a very silvery grey I'm going to come down and around it's actually like the colour I mixed anyway isn't it it's very similar it shows you can mix any color that you've got there anyway okay come down and around there now I am going to get a bit of a slightly different color I'm gonna go a bit of a purpley color I'm gonna get a bit of purple where's my purple quinacridone purple oops come on quinacridone purple lift off the palette doesn't want to and I'm going to mix that with a bit of my grey so quinacridone purple and a bit of grey and I'm going to add that in just gives a little lift gives the colours a little lift you mix a few different things in keeps it interesting pop this shadow around this side like that if 
I can cheat, see that he's got a shadow there. Blend it, take my wet damp brush, clean it, damp it, and then just drag that around. And it creates quite a nice shadow effect. And I'm going to do the same on this other side. So that's quinacridone purple and a bit of grey. Quinacridone purple, a bit of grey. Creates that nice purple shadowy colour. And again, I take that where I see the shadows on the horn. And I'm going to use this in all the shadow areas. So you need, I need more than just, just a plain grey. All right. I just, otherwise he'll, he's going to look flat. And I don't want him to look flat. So then I come up and around here. And it's not going to be exactly like the photo. Like I said, I paint impression. What I see in Impressionist. Okay, and I'm going to use this purpley tone for the other shadows. So I'm going to go back over that purple and that grey. I'm going to come into here and get start to get his shadows in. His deepest, darkest shadows in there. See he's got shadow coming down under that ear, like that, and he's starting to get some detail now. Thank you, doll. Thank you. Okay. So come down under my ear. That was my daughter just came in and said my painting's looking good. Really lovely of her. Okay, so I'm starting to, as you can see, build up the shadows and I'm using, like I said, quinacridone purple. Quinacridone purple and grey. And then I'm going to go into his lips because his lips are incredibly dark. You can see that on the reference picture. Very dark and then underneath as well. So I'm just going to just under there, strengthen up that dark, like that. He's a bit light to the front, but I'll pop in some little freckly bits with the dots. Dilute it a bit, take it onto the tip of his nose where he's got his squishy bit. Really soft muzzle, like that. Take that right round, you can see it takes it into, into his nostril actually. Darken that up a bit more. And as you can see, I'm just building up the layers. This is about layer number three now. And he's very dark under his chin. So I'll pop that down. And he's got, he's darker under this bit of his shoulder. So I'll pop that in and around. actually goes up beside his ear. So you can see I'm getting slowly, slowly getting the different layers of tone and colour of his fur in. Leave the odd highlight area. He's quite dark up under this bird. So I'm going to darken that up but leave the top of his head brown. And his fur goes off in different directions. So just do the texture of his fur. And this is a loose sketchy sort of drawing. It's not a, like it's not going to be, take days to do. I'm going to do this like it's a fast sketch. As if I was sitting at the zoo, because I like to do that. I like to go to the zoo and paint the animals in front of me. So I've learnt to draw fast and paint fast because of that. Because I do draw a lot from life. Okay, I've got to do this here. So I'm going to use this purpley tone which is quinacridone purple and grey and take it around. It's very dark underneath that ear. I've got to really make that ear shadow pop like that. Get that shadow right down his face like that. He's starting to come together now. They're starting to get him to look right. It takes a bit. You've got to be patient. You've got to be patient. It takes time. 
Okay. And he's got shadow completely down both sides of his face. So I can actually go around this side as well and just mark in fur pattern. Just as a guide, quick guide. Right, now this forehead, he's got lines, he's got stronger shadow around his eyes. I'm using the tip of my brush to get those wrinkles in. And he's got shadows down here come down under his eyes. So pop those in. Come around the top. And I'll add so I, I can even add some more detail as I like at the end with pen, with my micron pen. So I just dilute that grey down, that purpley grey. And the little birds are browny grey too. I'm going to add some more. I'm going to add more of that grey. Less water, more pigment. More grey, more cradacridone purple, just thicker. And I'm going to darken up the inside of his nostril. Like that. Take it right round. And he's actually got a shiny nose. And I'm going to pop some more detail into his eye now. Because that's dry. Leaving, being careful to leave the highlight is the white of the paper for his pupil. Righto. So that's pretty much that. I'm happy with that. Because you can see the gold around the edge of his eye. I've just got to add a little bit of a trim. His tear ducts are paler, are more pale. Alright, it's looking cute. I'm happy with that. Now, okay, I'm going to go that same mixture, quinacridone purple. I've got to get less watery. I've got to make it, I've got it too watery. Quinacridone purple. Burnt umber on this dark, almost grey. There we go. Quinacridone. Quinacridone purple. Okay. Let's have a look. And now I'm going to go back in and strengthen up some of these darker areas around his face. And around his horns. Get that shadow in there. You've got to just slowly, slowly build up all the layers. Just be patient. And you can see I'm not really waiting for anything to dry. It's all still a bit damp. Just a little bit here and there. You see a shadow needs to be there and a shadow there. Get my brush, damp it, clean it, take the moisture off it and then just drag that around. And the purple tones stop it from looking so flat. Right. Okay, looking at that, I'm quite happy with that. And I'm also going to add, I'm going to go back over this shadow tone now and darken up this shadow at the bottom. So quinacridone purple, grey and go really dark down here into the shadow areas, go super duper dark in a few areas just to create the contrast. Got to any what you think when you think you've gone dark enough, go darker. Like that. Anywhere that he's got super dark shadows, like that. Clean my brush and drag that colour out just to soften the edges of it. Like that. Come down and around here. Right. I'm happy with that. Same on this side again. Go in super dark. So quinacridone purple, grey, less water, more pigment. And really strengthen that shadow tone. Really make it pop around his ear. And he's got big muscly bit going down there. Pop that in. 
get this fur line and the patterns going. And you can see that, so that's purple. To create that, it looks right, but it's purple. So it just shows you, you don't have to use what you think the colours should be, but you can have a bit of fun with it. And use different colours that you wouldn't, you know, you don't necessarily see in nature, but it works. So I'm just going to pop some fur texture on here, up under this bird. But the shadow is directly underneath the bird is incredibly dark, so I better just shadow that. Use the very tip of my brush to create that fur again. The light's hitting his back, so he doesn't need to be completely dark on the back. I'll just add some fur texture. Still using this same purple, like that. I could probably soften that, actually. I'm going to clean my brush and just damp it and just lift off some of that so you can just it's less less obvious those lines are less obvious like that okay now get onto his face how am I going to do this I am going to use straight straight quinacridone purple on his face and I'm going to get into these lines around this bit here And as long as your tonal values are right, are right, you can use pretty much any colour. you just got to have your tonal values right. And it'll, it'll look right. Okay, so come here. He's got this line coming down his nose. What's a shadow there? Blend that out. Soften it and blend it. Mix up a little bit more. To an acridone purple and grey. Oops. It's too watery. To an acridone purple and grey. There we go, mix it up there. That's a bit better. Okay. Darken up the shadow in the top of his nostril. Now he's got very reflective and sort of shiny top of his nose. I've got to get I'm gonna grab my finer brush. And I'll let that see I've just dropped that into that wet spot and that'll that'll drag that paint all the way around. I'm gonna go around his eye. Like that. Around that eye. Starting to build it up. Drag it up with a damp brush. Okay, pop some shadows in up here. Just with very diluted paint. Just what's on the palette. Get some of these shadowy bits going on his face. Okay, let's have a look. Looking at the big screen so I can see the perspective a bit better. Got to sort of step back occasionally so you can see a bit more clearly. Okay, let's have a look. So I've got to do now. I'm looking at here. I've got to darken up his nose a little bit more, just on the tip of his muzzle. So I'm going more grey, a little bit less purple, and I've got to get. I've got to get my finer brush. And I'm going to start working on a little bit of detail with the grey. And just a touch of purple. Because he's got little dots, these little freckly dotty bits. Just using the very tip of my brush. And they'll dry back a few tones lighter. But that's all like his little pores on his nose. P-O-R-E-S, pores. Maybe like little sensitive bits that he can feel when he's feeling for grass under the water and stuff. So I'll do these little dots up onto the highlighted bit, at the top of his nose. So I'm just you can see I'm just using the very, very tip of the brush just to blob in the teeniest, tiniest little dots. And they will dry back very, very pale. 
so they won't be as noticeable as they are when they're wet and I'm just doing them in random, random placement you know it's not going to be exactly like the photograph just a suggestion just so that it sort of looks right <laughs> okay I've got to darken up under here so I can make a few stronger sort of brush strokes down towards the side of his mouth that's a very purpley grey right now let's have a look around his eyes I can start to strengthen up get some more of that purpley grey so I've mixed clinacridone purple with it and under his eye is darker under there and also the top of his eye the white of the paper is the highlight on his pupil I can always go in after he's got and add a bit more he's got a little highlight under there though so I'm going to leave a bit of white down there you can see that's still a little bit damp under there so that paints diffusing for me nicely go down and add a little bit of that really dark shadow into there now he's got pattern on his horns so I'm going to let all the rest of it dry for a second and I'm going to mark in some of the pattern the wear pattern on his horns and it goes in a couple of directions so I'm just going to mark it in with little lines little tiny just flowing lines in the direction of his horns like that and follow it around the light's hitting the very top of them so just follow the direction of the horns try not to keep them symmetric I want the little lines to be random like that then he's got stronger pattern at the bottom right I'm happy with that okay I'm going to get some yellow ochre now going back in with a completely different color I'll pick up clean my palette a little bit grab my cloth whoops you can see that bluey gray is gorgeous it's just given that shadow area it's really made that shadow area pop there we go and round that ear so now that ear stands out a bit more which is what I want it to do all right happy with that pop a bit more shadow color in this one really building it up nice and dark Coming in around there. Darking under his horn there. Leathery pattern on his ear. Alright, let's have a look. That's looking alright. I'm happy with that. Alright, I'm going to go in with a bit of the transparent sienna again. Get some transparent sienna. That was my undercolour. And I'm going to now add that in using my fine brush got to dilute it a bit more because you can see he's got that ready brown sort of color on him I'll have it mainly on his little face it's not really a little face it's got a huge face <laughs> so pop that on there take that right round all the way around and he's got like a bit in the middle follow you got to always remember to go the direction of the fur always go the direction of the fur you can drag that out a bit goes down that side of his face down that side of his face I can blend it clean my brush take the excess moisture off it and then just drag that around down with that part all right I'm going to add a little bit onto the rest of his body I can just see it a little bit around this side of him just a little bit just adds a bit of warmth around that side 
and I bit into his ears. Bit into his ears, like that. And like that, to the underside. Right, I'm going to work on the bird for a little bit. So he's a bluey grey. I'm going to do his beak first. Do his beak. He's got little bright orange eyes and a little bright orange beak. But I'm going to start with yellow. Do the yellow on his eye. And he's actually got that on his chest. And on his back as well. Right. Pop that on there. And his body is a grey as well. He sort of blends in with the cow, with the buffalo. But I don't want him to be completely like the, the buffalo. I'm going to make him a blue, more of a blue than a, than a, um, than a grey. Just so he's got a little bit of difference compared to the buffalo. And I'm going to leave snippets of white just so that he stands out a little bit. So I'm just using a bit of, a bit of dirty cobalt blue. Um, and then I'll wet my brush, drag it around. Because I want him to contrast, not blend in so much, quite so much with the, with the buffalo. And now I'll use a bit of brown. A bit of, um, I think it's burnt sienna. Add that onto him a little bit. And you can see his little feathers are ruffled. Pop a little bit of that into his wings, like that. Keeping quite simple, because he's not the focus of the picture. Okay, he's just a little little buddy who's sitting on his head trying to keep, clean the bugs off. Get the tip of my brush and add the red to the tip of his beak. Like that. And then a little bit of red around his eye. Just a little, a little bit of red into his feathers. And then spread that out a little bit. I'll let that dry fraction because I've got to go into his pupils and stuff with the black or with the grey, the dark grey. So I'm now going to go back onto his eye. I've got to darken up his pupil. Leave it being careful to leave the highlight of the white of the paper for the highlight. So like that. So now I'm getting into the final details. So he's just a sketchy sort of like a, I've drawn him quite sketchily. You know I haven't gone to a whole lot of fuss. It's taken me how long have I been on here? 58 minutes from start to finish to do this. And you can see I haven't you know I haven't been too fussy. I've sort of been a bit wild with my marks, because <laughs> and I think it's fun. It makes keeps it fun, takes the pressure off, takes the pressure off. Because yeah, I've definitely gone a bit wild, a bit wild like the buffalo with my paint marks. <laughs> All right, I've got to add a bit of brown to, the, to his ears, so I'm going back into my burnt umber. Back into me, I've got to get a bit of that on my palette. A bit of burnt umber. Oh god, this brush is a little, little bit of burnt umber. And just take that up, flowing into with his ears sort of direction. To the top of it, get a bit of brown on the top of his ear. Like that. A bit of that burnt umber. So I'm mixing up the colours now. So he's got purple on him. The main colours I've used, burnt umber, indigo and quinacridone purple are the main colours. And I've used them all in slightly different mixtures of each other. Um, some have got a little bit more water, a little bit less pigment. pigment. And then I've also had Micron Pen to begin with. Okay, let's have a look. Let's sit back and have a quick look. So that, that is tucked back. And, you, and in the reference photo on the screen, it's reversed because um, I couldn't figure out how to straighten it up. So now I'm going to go indigo onto this little bird up the top. I'm going to go get my indigo and I'm going to add that because he's quite under his, his, see he's dried off quite pale. So I'm going to use indigo for his shadows. 
like that. I'll take that down. Again, not being terribly fussy, just suggesting I'm going to use the indigo in his pupil like that. And around the front of his eye, he's got a shadow. I'm just looking to see where I can see any of the darkest darks and the lightest lights now. Anything that's really obviously a dark or a light. And I'm just going to go mad with the, with the shadows. Because you can never have too many shadows. You can never ever have too many shadows. His tail comes down there. Right. Now, pure indigo again. Grab pure indigo. And he's got a vein in his ear there. He's got a vein in his ear there. Go around the edge of his ear. Rough it up because he's got a hairy, eerie bit. And that is pure indigo onto that ear. And again, same on this ear. It's coming around here. Get a bit more of these lines on his horn in that pure indigo. Do some rough bits at the bottom. Pop a shadow in there. Alright, come it around. Do, do some heavier dark lines sort of around the bottom of his horn on both sides. Just add some dots and some textures because their horns aren't perfectly flat and smooth. He's got a shadow under there. got shadowy wrinkles there. I can use this indigo into his nostrils again to darken that off. I'm just really building up the darkest darks now. Does he need a background? He probably needs a sky. Am I going to give him a sky? I probably should give him a sky, shouldn't I? Let's give him a sky. So I'm going to get my other brush, my slightly bigger brush, and I'm going to go straight in with a diluted cobalt blue. A very diluted cobalt blue, and I'm just going to cut round the edge carefully. Amy brush. You can hear my dog in the background. I apologise. Bear Bear's been... He's my dog, the Jack Russell. And he's like, I want to come up into the art room. He's been a sookie. So I've come down here. Cut around his body. It's dry down here, so that's okay. Oops. Doesn't matter if I go under the horn a little bit as long as it's dry. Where I get the pigment. Because that way it's um not going to bleed into itself. So I'll just stay away from the horn a little bit like that. Okay. Yeah, it looks a bit better with a bit of blue, I think. And I'm using Archer's watercolour paper. And it's the cold press, which means it's rough or slightly rough. It's about 135 grams. It's not the heaviest paper you can get, but it's a nice, nice sort of doesn't buckle underwater. So it's what I want. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That just gives him a little bit of a little bit more of a background. I've got a shadow under. I've got to strengthen the shadow directly under the bird. Now I'm going to get some more really punchy shadows in. And you can see that shadow in the in the reference. Just really strengthen up under there. Really strengthen down here. Get a few punchy shadows down on his shoulders. A couple. He's got one on this side. He's got a couple under his chest. And that's just indigo. Pure indigo. He's got any. He doesn't really have many shadows down here. I don't really want to draw the eye up onto his back. I want the, the eye to stay towards the fa his face, so I'll let the back sort of disappear off and fade into insignificance. Alright, now let's have another look. Let's have a sit back and a look. I quite like him actually. I'm quite happy with how he's turning out. I'm going to go in with a little bit more. The more layers, the darker it'll get. So I'm going to go back in with a bit of pure indigo again onto his horns 
staying away from the sky a little bit staying to the inner edge of that horn a little bit because I don't want the, the, the blue to bleed into the sky okay strengthen that let's have a look I'm going to pop a bit, bit more of that blue around his wrinkly bits like that clean my brush and I don't reckon he's that far off done you know I'll blend a bit of this blue around hello Ro <laughs> how are you how are you how are you <laughs> yeah one can never have too many sparkles doll how are you doll <laughs> one can never have too many sparkles <laughs> so I'm just adding the finishing touches just adding the finishing touches of the water buffalo righto get that in there trying to leave the highlights <laughs> oh. Alright, dark starts. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think I am just about done. So, let's have a quick look. He does have a very dark shadowy bit there. This little bird's cute. Little, little tough little bird. Get the sparkles, darling. One can never have too many sparkles. The world needs more sparkles, especially now. Oh, you can hear my little dog, I apologise, in the background. <laughs> All right. I reckon, I reckon, I reckon, I reckon, we're just about done. So what I'm going to do now is be a sneaky leak and I'm going to grab my, uh, I have got a white pen, believe it or not. I'm going the white pen, being naughty. <laughs> got to get the lid off it. Water buffalo looks awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I love water buffalo. And I'm going to pop some little white bits. Just a few little highlighty. It's an acrylic pen. A few little highlighty bits. Just to take back. So a little bit of shine, a little bit of sparkle back on everything. Not too much though. A little bit around the bottom of his nostril. And I reckon we are done. So. It's just a sketchy, loose buffalo. I'm going to grab me a bit of cloth. I'm going to sign it. So what have you been up to, Ro? How have you been? So you can sign him down the bottom corner like that. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Hang on, I'm going to turn off my microphone. Okay, false alarm, I didn't sneeze. <laughs> but yes, we are done. I have a lot of them in the Philippines. Yes, we have them up the top end of Australia as well. They're amazing creatures. So, I'm going to take tape off the edges so you can see how he cleans up. Da -da -da, like that. And you can see nice crisp edges. And they're huge. They're huge animals. Monstrously huge animals. Okay, got that bit. Whoops. There we go. Now I can hear my little dog out at the window trying to get in. A little spark on the art and tons of sparkle on the nails. Yes, I have all the sparkles everywhere. <laughs> so there we go. There we go. He is done. So, I hope you have enjoyed this video, peeps. It's been lots of fun. Um, I'll try and think of something to draw tomorrow. Any suggestions, pop it in the comments below and I can come back tomorrow and draw and paint something else. And your suggestions, that would be awesome. And yes, thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me while I stream this. And I will see you all next time. The poops are huge too. <laughs> Their poops are huge, I'm sure. I had I just had like Ju Ju Jurassic Park vibes where the, the the doctor the girl vet nurse whatever she is goes and sticks her arm in the dinosaur poop that just gave me that that visual um, <laughs> but yes um, 
So there we go. I'm just going to try and turn that around. There we go. Now it's balanced. So <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, everyone. Have an awesome day and I will see you next stream tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. So yeah, suggestions in the bottom, in the, in the comments and if what you want to see me draw and I will try and draw it for you tomorrow. And thank you, Ro. <laughs>